Well, well, well. Series 1 went for sale yesterday on the Topps website for pre-order. Jumbos were $160. Regular Hobbies were $90. It took them a while to post the odds, but I was able to snag the odds, and I think I've come up with a number of boxes for some of the key formats that you, my ERB sports fans, are going to be interested in. Let's get into it. Welcome back in, ERB sports fans, to another video. In this video, we're going to do a print run video. I know this used to be Stryker's thing. It used to be Scotty V's thing. Well, ERB Sports puts his own spin on it, puts an old school paper printed copy with ink in front of us to talk about the various formats and how much they made of each. We know that yesterday the jumbo and the hobby boxes went for sale, but we were questioning how many of each boxes existed. Well, they made it a little bit more difficult than they did in the past. Usually you used to be able to judge the hobby boxes by the number of clear cards they had. I ran that number and it was kind of off. So I didn't really believe it. And then I looked at it and there was a 1989 autograph red parallel that is unique to hobby. There's 137 players in the checklist, each card being numbered to 25. One in 944 packs, yielding a total number of parallels of 3,000 and 3,425. Total number of packs of about 3.23 million packs, 20 packs in a hobby box now instead of the traditional 24 packs. Yes, thanks, Tops, for that reduction. Not. Yielding a total number of hobby boxes estimated at around 162,000 boxes. So we were curious, how many jumbo boxes did they make? And traditionally, the black parallel, which is unique to hobby, the base card black parallel, always numbered to one more than the prior year. Last year was numbered to 72. This year, numbered to 73. They didn't really tell us that in the odds, but we're going to have to go by gut feel here that it's going to be numbered out of 73. Normally, we have a 330 card checklist in all of Topps flagship products, but now we got 350 cards, which makes it a little bit more tricky. Total number of black parallels in the product should be about 25,500. The number that we're in the regular hobby format, as you can see there on the left, is 13,037, yielding around, I think, nine. No, actually about 12,000 left over, 12,513, there it is in column number two. The remaining black parallels, those are one in every 75 packs for Jumbo, yielding 938,468 packs or about 94,000 boxes. Now you might be asking, well, how does this compare from last year? Well, it's actually higher. Yes, I know. Tops didn't listen to me. Well, they probably had their mind made up. They're experts. Jeff Wilson says they're experts, so they must be geniuses over at Tops. They know what they're doing. I mean, who wouldn't know what they're doing when you see Series 1 sitting at a Walmart, at a Meijer, at a Target near you, just sitting there on the shelf collecting dust, wondering, when are you going to buy me? When are you going to discount me? I'm lonely. I know. Corny joke, right? But where are we at in retail? That is the other question because last year series one was absolutely wrecked in retail this year they played it a little different they tried to juice up the hanger boxes giving us some yellow crackle parallels and yellow parallels again like we saw in the walgreens boxes back in the day we missed those i know a lot of the people from the early part of the pandemic really missed when they took those off the shelf so bringing those back not a bad thing but the yellow crackle is numbered out of 50 Unique to the hanger boxes, one in every 43 boxes. So we can calculate based on a 350 card checklist, numbered to 50, 43 boxes. We get 752,500 hanger boxes. Yes, over three quarters of a million hanger boxes. We're going to have hanger boxes crawling out of our ears. They're going to be everywhere. Card Giants is probably going to have them on discount, 40% off before all is said and done. Well, when the price is right, maybe ERB Sports will buy some, but we'll get into that in the next segment. Then we were curious about the blaster boxes, because last year the blaster boxes were absolutely terrible. Golds were like one in every 99 packs. They made like a million boxes, and we said, oh my goodness. Nobody's going to buy these. These are absolutely overpriced at $25 a piece. Well, this year, 
looks like the flower parallels are unique. There's an Easter themed parallel like we had with Halloween and Update. The blaster box flower parallels are numbered out of 50, 350 card checklist, numbered to 50, one in every 339 packs for those, seven packs per box. We get 847,000 boxes, almost just shy of seven eighths of a million boxes. Hard to believe, isn't it? Yes, I know. That is down from last year, but only marginally. But here's where I think they made up for it. They went a little bit more heavy on the giant boxes from my estimation. Now, the last time we did an estimate for series one and series two last year, the giant boxes or the monster boxes, I think I might've misspelt monster there, monster boxes, you get the point. We were talking about that in series one and series two from last year. We said, that's oh, a little difficult because there's no unique parallel to that product. Well, lo and behold, there is this year. They've got their own little Mega Stars parallel checklist, which has cards numbered to 50, 99, 15, 10, whatever. They got a lot of parallels, lots and lots of parallels. So it's going to make it seem like you're pulling lots and lots of parallels. But the basis of this estimation for the monster boxes and giant boxes, it's going to be based on the Mega Stars parallel. There are 20 cards in that checklist based on the pack odds. I didn't actually post that there. You'll have to trust me on that. The gold's numbered out of 50, yielding a total number of monster box slash giant box packs of 2.44 million packs. Traditionally, these have been 16 packs per box, yielding a total number of boxes estimated at 152,250 boxes. Whew, boy. Does that just sound like a lot of boxes? Yes, it does. It didn't end there. I didn't even assess in this estimation the retail boxes. Those are based on 24 packs per box. You'd find those at your Meyer, Walmart, Target. Sometimes you can get them in full box form on the Fanatics website. You can get them on Card Giants, everywhere pretty much. Fat packs, those are 108 per case. Blister packs, used to see those at Meyer, Walmart. They got the new thing this year, Little League Packs. Got parallels in that. I think they're going to give them away to kids. Pretty cool. Dollar Store Packs. Well, we've seen those before on Jab's family where he goes and hunts around for absolute garbage because he doesn't have to pay for it. How great would that be? And then we've got Grocery Packs, which I think would be like hanger packs. Not necessarily hanger boxes, but like retail packs in a different format. But you get the point. There are lots and lots of formats to get your hands on Series 1. We didn't even cover the good checklist that is Series 1. I mean, we've got Ellie De La Cruz, Jason Dominguez, Evan Carter, lots, lots more. Many, many good guys that you wanted. Overall, the 2024 class should be pretty good that they held Ellie De La Cruz and Jason Dominguez into this year instead of last year. We're going to have a pretty good Series 2 this year, and who knows what will happen in Update. Does Jackson Chorio get called up at some point in spring training? He could be on the Brewers opening day roster. Does that make him a candidate for update? We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But this is a Series 1 print run video. So, other notes. Golden Mirror Parallels, as you guys can see there on the bottom, are going to be very, very tough to pull. They were a little bit easier in update. They were extremely tough to pull last year. It's going to cost you one in every 24 hobby boxes to pull one golden mirror parallel. You're going to get two hanger cases to pull one golden mirror parallel. And most other formats are going to have the potential to pull golden mirror parallels, but they're going to be darn near impossible to pull. They're going to be very, very low print run. Given the fact that all new formats exist with unique parallels, yellow, yellow crackle, yellow foil, Flowers, eggs, Easter, monster box megastars, umbrellas, watering cans, etc., etc. They're just inventing names now. I never thought I would see the day where we would have a watering can parallel, but we do. And so what are my final thoughts as I sum up this video around 10 minutes? I am going to stay away from this product unless the price is right. I will not buy singles right away. In fact, I maybe not even buy it at all. 
I love the fact that Ellie De La Cruz is in this product. I love the fact that Jason Dominguez is in this product. But I think patience is the play. Sure, you can rip the product. You can grade the product. You can be first to market and you'll do okay. But keep in mind, we've got a lot of shorter print run products to come down the road. Chrome, Chrome Sapphire, Logo Fractor, Bowman. You're going to find these same rookies in all those products. So I see no reason to rush in and buy the absolute crap out of this product when it doesn't look like they have lowered the print run year over year. The price on this, you might ask, I should have listed this, but I'll try and flash it up on the screen after the fact. You might ask, how much is the sales value at the current retail price for each of these formats worth to tops? I ran the numbers based on the number of boxes. We're looking that they're trying to cash in a total sales value of over $70 million in Topps Series 1 flagship print run. Yes, think about that for a second. $70 million. That's insane. To me, I don't think the market can support that. I don't think there's enough money in the hobby to support that. I don't think there's enough rich people in the hobby like Jeff Wilson. I've never met him, have nothing against him, but he's opening a card shop soon and he's going to be doing breaks. He's going to be doing everything under the sun to try and push the card market. And I appreciate it as a card seller. I can't thank him enough. But to summarize, I just think patience is the key here. Don't rush in and buy this. If you want to buy a little bit of it, sure. It's a little bit better than last year in retail. I wouldn't go crazy on the jumbos because I don't think they're as juiced as they were last year. I think a lot of people thought that. I wouldn't go nuts on hobby or jumbo because they reduced the card count. 240 cards in hobby now and 400 cards in jumbos. They took 60 cards out. Think about that. If that keeps happening, they're just taking value away from us, the consumer. And so I think we got to vote with our wallets here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more content. We got lots of fun stuff coming up. And I will see you in the next video.